our strength seems exhausted and our hopes retreat in apathy. Darkness invades our soul as if we were enveloped in dark night. And as happens to nature under the mantle of light of night, even though we have springs of understanding and flowers of goodwill in the vast expanse of our inner world, everything remains veiled by the fog of our troubles. However, even then, the all-merciful does not abandon us completely to the darkness of our doubts and disappointments. Just as he makes effulgent stars shine in the sky, unveiling a constellated pathway of the firmament to the traveler lost in the world, he also lights the fire of new convictions and loftier aspirations in the sky of our ideals, so that our spirit does not get lost on its journey towards the higher life. I will never leave you nor forsake you, promises the divine goodness, neither loneliness nor abandonment. Heavenly providence continues watching over us. Therefore, let us hold to the comforting certainty that every storm is followed by a tranquil atmosphere and that there is never night without the dawn. Um, we usually don't comment on those um, passages, but this passage is, is so it's so beautiful, and I just want to bring it up that we are in this month where we work on the issue of suicide awareness, and this passage um, make me think of it, right? Especially when it says here is that even in the times where we are at our very, very darkest place with incredible doubts and disappointments, which Emmanuel here is saying that we all have those moments where we are feeling like hopeless, right? So he says, just as he makes a fulgent star shining the sky, unveiling a constellated pathway of the firmament to the traveler, lost in the world, he also lights the fire of new convictions and loftier aspirations in the sky of our ideals so that our spirit does not get lost on its journey towards the higher life. How beautiful that is. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So it is with that certainty and the warm feeling of the Lord's presence in our existences, watching over us, never ever forgetting us or leaving us, that we will together at this time raise our thoughts to our divine master and to God, our Father, asking for their protection, for their love, for their inspiration, for this beautiful Sunday morning. May the Lord be with all of us, embracing us in peace, in harmony, inspiring all of us who will be listening, but mostly our friend who will be speaking to us today, who has so kindly agreed to join us in this morning. So bless us all in both realms of life, so that this hour can be precisely that, an hour of nourishment. An hour where superior ideals can meet us in our place of frailty and give us the boost necessary so that we can press on, leaving, growing, rejoicing, and feeling very closely God, not only outside, but within us. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and so be it. All right, my dear friends, today I'm very, very pleased to bring my dear friend and work of the spiritist movement, Mackenzie Mello, who is speaking to us all the way from Massachusetts. Welcome, Mackenzie. It's so nice to have you here. Hi, Susanna. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you, everyone that's uh, around there, my friends that visited me already, visited us here at the Spiritist Center. 
and uh, it's a it's a real pleasure to be here although virtually but the hearts connected and the minds connected as well <clears throat> so can i just like can i start already i see that anna flavia said good morning and mary ramirez said good morning good morning so good morning to everyone here is also a very bright sunny day it's uh it's very nice outside and uh we're at the same time zone so it's uh 11 07 here as well um and thank you everyone as well that that are watching uh from the future right uh that are not watching now live so a few months ago um andrea and i were talking and uh, she said hey uh you you could could you come talk to us and talk with us and have a conversation and so i said yes and uh we tried a few times um, I think we were supposed to, to to talk in May, I think, and then something happened with me. And then the next time we tried, it didn't work out, but here we are. And um, that's good, uh, you know, that we persevere, that we have the mental mental strength to to keep going, to keep moving. And that's uh, on that tone and on that note, I'd like to to start the topic for for today. And I was about to say for tonight because every our meetings here are usually at night so uh for today which is uh mental forces and mental forces um is um is a topic that is in one of the um the glorious books by divaldo divaldo franco and uh, joana de angelis um that that exists in english already it was it's been translated so it's uh you can uh, you can find it uh, online physically to buy and uh this topic mental forces is inside this this book named glorious days and um so that's what andrea invited me to talk and uh, here we are um with the blessing of the good spirits with the blessing of, of our dear friend and master jesus let's uh let's chit let's chat a little bit about this this topic of mental forces um, what is the mind? The mind is something that um, it, it's kind of hard for us to to define, and that's exactly how uh, Joana de Angelis uh, starts her text uh, by by saying that it is it is um, it is hard to define uh, because um, we we actually we still have to learn a lot about spirit the spiritual life spiritism <clears throat> um, has been helping us to understand this this us as a spirit and not as a, um, a body uh, and this is where I, I want to start um, I'd like to 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 make you you know think about and probably you you, you thought about this already but uh, I think it's a good point for us a, a good you know point for us to um, to start talking about is that we are spirit I know that this may sound um, basic to to all of us right we talk about spiritism and of course in the, the name itself spiritism right um, it's the spiritist no, it's the, the 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 science of the spirit, right? It's the study of the spirit, spiritism, right? Um, and um, but it is very funny how we still today, even with years and years and years of of studying spiritism, and I'm talking about myself, but maybe you too, we tend to say my spirit, right? Um, as we tend to say, my body as well, right? So which one is true, right? Is it my spirit or is it my body? <clears throat> what am I talking about? Um, I am a spirit. And that sentence is very clear. I am a spirit. I am continuously a spirit. Be it when I am incarnated, or be it when I'm not incarnated, be it when I'm, quote unquote, dead. Therefore, being a spirit, I cannot be a body. 
right? I have a body, right? Or it is my body if I consider myself as a spirit. So it's not a permanent body. It's permanent while I'm here incarnated, but it's not permanent because one day this body will perish. The spirit goes on. The spirit keeps moving. So that's one thing that I'd, I'd like to make it very clear for us to really start thinking about ourselves as spirits, because that's what comes first, right? It's not that it's necessarily the most important thing when I am incarnated, but it is a very, very big part of who we are, of what we are while, while we are here incarnated, right? So having made, made this, you know, clear somewhat and i hope you know everybody is following my my train of thought here um one has to be in contact with the other right so my body needs to contact what i am a spirit or as we tend to say it more uh, easily my spirit so the spirit who is me my spirit contacts me or not me but my body and I have to attach one to each other, right? And there must be a link in between those those two layers because one is very touchable, very material. It even makes sound and probably you're listening to it while you do that. You're hearing it. And um, the other one is not touchable, at least not usually uh, because it's, it's not... Um, material in the sense in the same sense that this matter my body is why am i bringing this up i'm bringing this up because it is it needs to be very clear to us that the spirit who is me or every one of us here who are listening to this we are spirits every one of us we have to have some way of controlling this body so if a spirit is very um, um, ethereal, let's use the word ethereal, um, and it cannot be touched normally, right? And we are probably, like Paul said in, in one of his messages, uh, uh, in one of the letters that he wrote to one of those you know, people in the past, I don't remember which letter he wrote, but he says, we are surrounded by uh, by a multitude of of witnesses meaning that we have a, there are lots of spirits around us right and we cannot touch them we cannot see them or, uh, unless we are you know mediums that can have actually you know perceive them and notice them or hear them or see them but most of us regularly we can't see this world that surrounds us but it is there right and i when i'm incarnated there must be something that touches one side with the other so that we can interfere so that I can control my hand, right? While I'm thinking that I'm going to move my hands forward, then the hands go forward and go back and go forward and go back. So that's me as a spirit having this, this um, control over the physical body. And we all, although we... We don't think about it. We know that this is true. If we come from the spirit, the spiritist perspective, that we are a spirit that have a body, that has a body. Okay, having established that, right? We have to understand as well the other way around, that my body affects the spirit that I am. Because if I touch my my hand if i knock on my hand my body is feeling but my consciousness what i am is aware that something is happening to my body so if there's a wind blowing and i feel the wind i am gonna feel it in my consciousness my conscious or my mind will recognize that and then it's it becomes part of at least for a little bit for, for our memory, for short-term memory. Again, having said that, this interaction is constant and non-stop. 
The topic for today is mental forces. And I started talking about mind and body. Mental forces. It is something that's non-physical. It comes from within. It comes from who I am. It comes from um, the spirit that I am. Not the spirit that I have, the spirit that I am. And it goes through my body, through my brain, because that's where we think that we, we think from, right? We don't think from the heart, although some people say, oh, no, my heart thinks harder or thinks more than my brain, right? And that's the conflict, emotion, and reason, right? Um, and then that thing affects my body. What I think affects my body. I think that everybody can agree with that, right? I remember one thing that happened to me when I was younger. I was coming back. Um, I, um, I, I was about, I don't know, maybe 18, 19. And my brother was working at night. And I, I was the one who would drive him from his work back, to, back home. So I, I drove to the store. I picked him up and I was driving back home. It was a, a very short drive. I don't know, five minutes. And as I'm driving, um, a truck just crosses in front of me truck was stopped by by the, the right hand side and um the, without any notice and um he just like turns left um and i had to push on the brakes very very suddenly and uh fortunately nothing really happened i mean physically the car stopped before the truck although it was very very close um and uh, then I, I had to back up so the truck could, could keep doing what it was doing. And then after they turned, I, I had to stop the car. I use this, this example that happened to me because it was right there and right then. And this never get, got out of my mind. It was right there and right then that I realized how powerful the mind is to the body. Because if you think about it, nothing really happened physically. I was not affected physically by a hit, by, um, by an accident. No, I, I stopped before hitting the truck. The truck never touched the car. The car never touched the truck. We were very close, but nothing physical really happened. But as I'm talking right now to you, my, my legs are like i feel like a tingling sensation on my legs every time i describe this that i relive this moment that my mind starts going back to that moment where that thing happened my body starts to shiver a little bit i can feel my body no one can notice that no one can look at me and say hey what's going on well, maybe depending on the situation, the, if the person knows me well, probably the person will know about it. But I am the only one that feels it, that feel it, right? And um, every time I think about, you know, the power that I have inside myself that my mind has, and the mind being this generator, as as uh, Joanna D'Angeli starts by saying that she says uh, she says. You know, the mind is a dynamo. It's a generator of energy that we cannot catalog, that we cannot uh, really, really pinpoint what it is. And that expresses itself automatically through things that it lives. And with this expression, it's, uh, it comes with it, a, a, a set of emotions or feelings that we have on the inside. And then it projects itself to and generate this energy that comes out of us. So depending on how how uh, how much feeling or how much emotion we put into a thought, that emotion will affect the world the world more powerfully. I feel that power with that mind with that memory. With and and I, I'm telling my story because it's me who I'm talking about, right? However. Um, it's not only me. I'm pretty sure that if I was here listening to you and you started telling a story of, about yourselves, you would feel something 
from that story that only you can feel, only you can say, and you feel that your body is actually um, um, sensing it as if when we close our eyes, we can almost, I can almost see the scene in my, in my vision, in my inner vision, but not only the visual part, I can feel somewhat that same sensation. It is as if my body, which it is the, the case, is being affected by my mind, affected by what I am, affected by my experience, affected by my thoughts, this dynamo of generator of energies together and coupled with the emotions that I put into it. That to me is probably one of the most um, important realizations that we can have for us to understand how much our mind impacts the world. Because, of course, that the mind is connected straight to the body. Me, I'm spirit, connected straight to me as a, as a body. Of course, that the first um, thing that it will affect is me, as a, physically speaking, is my body. Everything that I think, everything that, I, that I, uh, uh, comes from me, be it conscious or unconscious will affect what first will affect the body that surrounds that encapsulates or that is attached or that, that is connected to me to my mind to me a spirit everything that comes from the inside affects first this body here you are watching me right i am talking i'm the my voice is uh, going through the microphone, going through the internet, reaching out a bunch of houses or a bunch of places with people watching and you are listening. What I'm saying is going through your body, right? So imagine the process of this communication. But everything that I, that I say, everything that I say comes from the mind. I'm thinking before. It comes through the voice. But it also already affected me. My body is full of the vibrations of things that I'm saying, of things that I'm thinking. Now I am, to a certain degree, affecting you. You may allow it to affect you or not. But whatever I'm saying here is going towards you. So in some sense, I am affecting your body. I am affecting your mind. And if this will affect you later, that's up to you. But it's already affecting me. So my mind is actually and physically affecting you wherever you are. And even if you don't know, you are affecting me. Because you are wherever you are, you are thinking about what I'm saying. And by thinking about what I am saying, we are creating a connection. So we are creating a network of connections. So I am connecting, connected. And at, at this very moment, probably I am the center of this connection, as Susanna was when she started. And you are probably, I don't know if you're totally focused on me, but probably not, you're doing something else. So you're also connected to other stuff and other people that are around you. And we create this, this entanglement of minds thinking about one specific thing or multiple things, depending if we are together and, and uh, connected with other people at the same time. And this affects me. Why? Because I'm, think, I'm, I'm talking about here and, and thinking about what are people thinking? Are they understanding? Um, are they happy? Are they not happy? What should I do to change this? What What do I need to say? What can I say? What uh, What shouldn't I say? And all of this, the feedback that you don't even know that you are sending me, is affecting me. So we are affecting each other. And depending depending on what we think, and depending on how we think, we can um, actively change the other person. 
Of course, that the more distant I am and the less powerful is the transmission. Let's think about um, let's think about a radio station, right? That we still have on our cars and we get, you know, from the antenna where it goes to. So imagine a, a radio station that is uh, playing right now um, in the southern island, uh, in the southern tip of, of France or in the in the southern tip of, of Italy, like in the boot right there, right in right at the heel, let's say, right, right at the heel of the boot in Italy. A lot of people that are there are listening to radio right now. But that antenna of the radio station that's in Italy it only it can only affect or at least more powerfully the ones that are close close to that antenna the farther away i go it's harder to get that antenna to get what it, that antenna is transmitting or emitting right the closer i get it will be better the farther away it will be weaker but there are ways that you can still get that that transmission it's going to be hard it's going to be faint but i can you know moving away i can you know create more powerful antennas on my side to connect to that when i think about this i think about how how much we affect the world around us right we 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 see for example and now i'm going to make the analogy to people we see the example of people around us Whoever it is, whoever they are, be it my father, be it somebody at work, be someone that I just met, and that person did something at that specific moment. And that something that the person did affects those people around them at that specific moment. That effect, that, that thing that happened right there, will affect those people. It can affect them only there, but it can also irradiate and affect more people around. So let's say uh, Susanna told me a story today, whatever the story is, and uh, that story stuck to my mind. So she said it 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago. It still stuck with me. Only I would talk with her. No one else was around. But if I repeat that story to someone else, that first story affected me that will in the future affect someone else. It is as if I'm extending the transmission of that first antenna. Our actions depend on or stay or stick depending on how much time we spend and how much force or power we put into that story and how many people I can affect that thing doesn't need to be for good or for evil it is a fact it happens everything i do affects the world that surrounds me if it's good or bad it will affect we are all christians we are spiritists and we um we follow jesus's teachings which is you know god's laws the, the law of love he lived physically in the in the world 2000 years ago socrates was a philosopher a greek philosopher together with plato lived around 600 years before jesus buddha lived before that time we are still hearing them today jesus around 2000 years later socrates 2600 years ago buddha even more but they are still affecting the world. That's how powerful that mind force was. It still resonates because it resonated with a lot of people. And because it resonated with a lot of people, we, we are um, extenders of that initial antenna and we are rebroadcasting the message. What type of message am I broadcasting now? That's a question to you and to me. What type of message I am broadcasting now? Everything that I think, be it consciously or unconsciously, is being broadcasted. To whom? To whomever is around me. And whoever, who is, who is around me? 
I talked about Paul a few minutes ago, that, talking about the, the witnesses, the world of witnesses around us, the good spirits, the spirits to, that connect to my antenna, that can hear my antenna, you know, and if you know that in, a, in the old days of radio, right, although some radio is still today, you turn the dial, right, so that you uh, connect to a different uh, radio station, and even in TVs was dials, right? You you would turn channel one, two, three, four, like rotating the dial. Today, of course, all in the remote control, no dials anymore, or almost no dials anymore. And uh, we switch switch to different channels to hear different things, to attach, to connect, to to um, to be in tune with other minds that are of interest to me go i will go back i am a spirit whatever i am thinking and whatever message i am sending it doesn't need to be like i said a few times consciously it can be unconscious because i am what i am and everything that i am it is pulsing or pulsating right it is like being emitted all the time so if i carry a burden of remorse on the inside and that thing never gets out of my, my system, I am a bomb of remorse that is pulsing all the time. People that are surrounding me, that are around me, that can feel or can tune into that same vibration, because you know, as sound is vibration, my mind vibrates too. The thoughts that come out of me as from from my mind together and mixed with my feelings and my emotions they generate this package this wave this wave and wave and packets that people around us spirits incarnated or discarnated will be able to attach to will be able to say hey i'm feeling this i'm sensing this oh there, there there's this vibration coming from that specific place i'm pretty sure for example yesterday i was talking to someone at the spirit center here in massachusetts and uh, the person said, oh, I, I've been to a few different spirit centers. And uh, but when I, I got to yours, I got to yours and people say it's mine. It's not my spirit center. It's the spirit center. I'm a worker with everybody like everybody else. So I said, no, it's everybody else's. It's, it, it's from everyone. It's not mine. Um, uh, but when I got to here, I felt something different. And maybe uh, some people that went there. Uh, didn't feel as good and then went to another one and then started going to the other spirit center. Why? Because I'm, it's not something that's good or bad. It's just a, a better fit based on the people that are there. You know, some people like the places that are more quiet. Some people like places that are a little more agitated, right? And both places can be as spiritual as the other. But I have, or and I have been brought up, for example, in a place where it's it's more um, a, a, a life or lively, let's say. And other people grew up in a place they are more quiet; they don't talk that loud. And you will find a better match. It's not being better or being worse. It's a better match. It's a better tune. It's the radio being tuned, and I'm tuning to that radio. So. If I carry a lot of bad things, bad thoughts, bad emotions inside of myself, what do we think that I'm attracting to myself? What do I think that my mind is telling those spirits, be them incarnated or discarnated, what is my mind, what is me, without even knowing sometimes, telling other people, other spirits? I am telling that's, that's who I am. Right. And of course, that, you know, uh, that vibrations, right, whatever kind of vibration we can be interpreted as colors or as sounds, you know, everything in the world vibrates. And these vibrations, they have specific, let's say, tastes to it, right? tastes to them. And I am going to be, you know, more prone to have a, 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 a like more like a bitter taste or a bitter sweet taste or I'm more of a sweet person, or I'm more of a, um, at the mummy's person, or I'm more of a salty person, because I prefer this kind of taste, or I prefer this kind of color, or I prefer this kind. So when I get, and I'm talking about just physically here, but if I bring this to, 
to who I am and seeing pe uh, uh, people looking at me f uh, spiritually or not, or feeling me, feeling what I am and who I am, I am going to throw some people away from me because they don't like that vibration or I'm going to pull people towards me. So if it's just something physical, that's fine. And if it's something spiritual, also that's fine. However, I have to understand that there are some stuff that I think, there are some stuff that I feel that are not good to me. And some other stuff that are good to me that make me feel better, that make me feel lighter, that makes me feel um, that I'm improving, that I'm getting more either knowledge or that I'm getting more um, love, that I am uh, actually and positively and constructively doing something good, not only for me, but for the world. And the other way around, there are some stuff that I, I do to myself that I'm, I'm putting a heavier burden on the society at, uh, you know, at large and also at the society that surrounds me, be it at my work, be it at my school, be it, at, be it in my house. So everything that I think, everything that I think affects me and affects the world around me and surrounding me. There, there's this group of spirits that are attracted or distracted yeah, from me uh, because of the way I am. Kardec asks the spirits in the spirits book um, if the spirits affect our uh, affect me, right? And I, uh, since I'm not a very good, you know, memory guy, I I really um, forget the stuff. Uh, I'm not, I would never be a good actor because I don't remember lines perfectly. I always tend to put words in people's mouths in that sense. And uh, so in the Spirits book, question 459, um, Kardec asks the spirits, and I have, I have the book here on, on the computer, do spirits influence our thoughts and actions? Remember in the beginning, I, I, talk, I talked a little bit about this, but I didn't say that was from the Spirit's book, that whatever, whatever I think, whatever I say, I affect other people around me. And I can affect not only here, but I can affect them in the future, like as if this is expanding, like an umbrella, or when you throw a, a stone into a lake, you see those circles going around. Of course, that it affects less and less the farther it goes, but it affects everybody or a lot of people and depending on how strong that impact is it can really affect the whole thing imagine you know when the dinosaurs were extinct right one of the theories is that there are asteroids that hit the earth and then the the entire earth like lost their lives you know the entire dinosaur and probably the fauna in the, the fauna at the time as well and then uh, new animals and everything you know uh, uh, sprung again so do spirits influence our thoughts and actions? And the, the answer to this question to me is marvelous and has a lot to do with what we are talking about. It says they often direct both those spirits. They often direct both thoughts and actions. As I'm speaking to you right now, I am in some degree affecting you and directing your thought. Where am I directing your thoughts? I am directing your thoughts in the way that I am talking about things. If I take a, a, a wild turn, your thoughts will say, hey, whoa, what, what happened here? Mackenzie now it's, it's doing something different. I am directing your thoughts, right? And your actions can be affected by these thoughts. But it, it doesn't stop there because the spirits say, you know, it affects, you know, direct both, right? Um, but it can be a, a slight, right, direction. It can be something very simple. But, but they say their influence, they continue, right? Their influence is greater than you think. And say, whoa, what? So the spirits are saying that the spirits influence our thoughts and actions. And they say, yes, they often do both. But, or not but, and it is greater than what you think. For very frequently, it is they who guide you. 
wow, that's so powerful. So what I like to think about this question, we're not going to talk about, you know, a lot about this question, but one thing that intrigues me all, every time I listen, uh, listen and I read this question is if they guide me more than I think, and I am a spirit, I can almost hear you thinking about where is it going? So if I'm a spirit and the spirits are saying that the spirits guide me more than I think, I can think of myself as being a spirit. Why? Because I am a spirit. I told this. I, that's how I started, right? I am a spirit. So if they guide me, it means that I can guide me, right? That actually, I am the most powerful spirit to guide myself. And then I, not only I can guide me, I can also guide others. The question is, though, what am I guiding them or myself to? What am I putting into my mental force, into my mental field, into me as a spirit, as this... Um, propulsor as this generator as this dynamo of energy where am i putting all this energy into i am i have this power i have this possibility more than possibility i am and i have this capability i have this dynamo i have this generator that can make change not only to me but to the exterior world i have a very big problem with snowing no, sorry, not snowing, but uh, skiing. Uh, I was, I was say, gonna say ski, and I, I never went to ski. My brother lo loves skiing. I know you're, most of you are Floridians, so um, you never see snow, right? Only when you travel and you spend two days and say, hey, that's enough. Let's go back, right, to the sun. Um, here in Massachusetts, you know, we have snow and we have a lot of snow when it's snow, snow time, uh, when it's winter. Um, but I worked for a little while, and um, um, I'm I'm almost done. I promise, right? I know that you. Hey, where is this guy going? He's starting all over again. <laughs> so, um, um, it, I used to work for FedEx, like driving the truck and delivering stuff, and uh, I was very worried all the time of falling, of falling, of you know hurting my feet, and then I wouldn't be able to work. So I never, I never accepted the invitation, my brother's invitation, to go skiing with him. Because, you know, it's not that you want to 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 uh, to have an accident, but you will have an accident, right? Be it simple or be it a little harder, but we will have an accident. I will fall. And God forbid I fall and uh, I don't even need to break a foot or anything. But even if I, you know, had a, a sprain injury like on my, um, my ankle or something, I wouldn't be able to work. So I really never accepted. And after that, I decided not to go because, you know, I don't need... Uh, one more exercise or one more stuff to do in my life. I already have uh, plenty, so I decided never to go. But I am, I'm always amazed on how people can do that thing. And I found this, um, I'm going to ask, I, I told uh, Susanna that I was going to uh, show this video, but apparently the spirits that are, or not the spirits, quote unquote, the spirits that are guiding what I'm talking here, uh, decided that that was not how I should start. So I started just talking. And, uh, but now I think it's the time to show this video, which is just a simple video of this this uh, lady um, going down the going down the hill, not skiing, but doing uh, what what is this called? Let me uh, you maybe maybe you guys know more than I am. It's like it's snowboarding. I'm gonna share this screen here with you guys, and it's just a a brief video. I'm not gonna show it everything. It's just one minute, but I'm just I just want to show you. Um, um, briefly show you this um, this this video and it probably I mean being Floridians um, you know what it is but you never experience like snow like this uh, but this is this is just you know this lives in Copper Mountain she trains four to five times a week and, uh, gold here is to, her goal is to win gold he was second so that, World Championship. this person right and um, i'm not going to show more because i mean there's no point to it she's just going to roll down the, the the mountain um 
but it's in Sochi. You saw it there, right? Um, in 2014, it was uh, one of the, um, the, Olymp the the Winter Olympics, right? And uh, she is just um, um, snowboarding down. And I could never do that, right? Um, or maybe if I could put my mind to it, I would do that. I could could do that. Maybe you guys could do that, but probably would decide not to because it's too cold, because you don't need to do it, like I just explained myself. And uh, she actually, you know, uh, finished third, so she got the bronze medal, and um, uh, and that's it. That's the the video. And I, I just I wanted to share this one with you because I think it's uh, it's something that. You know, sometimes we, we tend to say to ourselves, oh, no, I can't do this or anything. But, you know, if some other people can do it, right, why can't I do it? And the only answer that I have to that question is because I chose not to do it, because I didn't put my mind to it, because I didn't put my mental forces to it. If I put my mental force, force to something, uh, I can do it, right? I can do it because she did it, because so many other people did it. But it's a choice. I can want to do it or, I, you know, I... I I don't want to do it, right? I can do it, but I don't want to do it. So that's fine. And it's normal. It's a choice. That free will, right? That we talk so much about in spiritism. Free will. We, we choose to do it or not to do it. Um, and then there's the, the other video that I want to show if I can find it here. Um, let me see if I find it here. This one, it's a seven-minute video, but I'm going to show this one. I, I want you to pay attention to what she says. Um, and this is the same woman. This is the, the I'm going to show... Uh, I'm going to share here, so you're going to see her face. Um, you didn't see it. You didn't see her face there, um, but um, uh, this is the same one. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm not sure Mackenzie looks frozen to me at this moment, maybe because he was just talking about the snow. Can someone confirm? Oh, there you are. Came back. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened here. Yeah. So. It was just, I said you were frozen because you're talking about the snow. So you got frozen. <laughs> That's a good one. I like You want to try to bring the other video? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to show it right okay. uh, now. So, okay. um, yeah, so this one is that same woman that we didn't see her face, right? Her name is Amy, per uh, Amy Purdy, and she's going to talk, and it's, I'm going to show for about a minute or two what she's saying here. Um, I'm dying. I'm dying. I know I am. I have to get to the hospital right now. I started to realize that there was something really, really wrong. My heart was beating out of my chest. I was so shaky. I was so weak. And I realized that I couldn't feel my feet. When I glanced to the floor, I saw that my feet were purple. And when I glanced at my hands, I saw that my hands were purple. Then when I looked at my reflection in the mirror, I saw that my nose, my chin, and my cheeks were purple as well. I was dying and I knew it. I immediately began to panic. My heart was beating out of my chest. I was seeing tunnel vision. I was sicker than I could ever explain as I lay in a coma that the doctors diagnosed me with something called meningococcal meningitis, which is a vaccine preventable blood infection. I was given less than a 2% chance of living and immediately put on life support. We have no idea how I got it. So for all I know, somebody could have sneezed on me when I was in the elevator at work and maybe that's how I got it. But due to this little microscopic bacteria, over the course of two and a half months, I ended up losing my spleen. I lost my, I lost my kidney function. I lost the hearing in my left ear, and due to the septic shock that my body went into, I ended up losing both of my legs below the knees. She ended up losing both of her legs below the knees. Did you hear that? Oh, by the way, that image or that, that first shooted footage that I showed, it was her, but not before she lost her legs after she lost her legs. Third place, she got bronze medal going down the hill, frozen, <laughs> as you guys made a joke, um, frozen in that Sochi Olympics. 
actually Sochi Paralympics. Amy Purdy is a proof, is a proof, not only to me, and she's only one example, of course, and you know many more, how powerful our, our minds are when we put it to a goal. It's our duty to choose the best goal for us and for the world around us and put our minds, our mental forces into action. She is the one that also, and I, I'm going to show this other um, video or at least a brief video so that I can end, up, end with this. She is living proof, like many others, maybe like many of you, that our minds are very are very very powerful jesus put his puts his put his mind into coming here living among us and showing us the power of our minds the power of our will the power that we have to change not only ourselves but to change the world around us and this is um, another presentation of her on the Rio Olympics. Now, this is not the 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 uh, the Olympics, or the Paralympics. This is the opening ceremony, or part of the opening ceremony of the regular Rio Olympics. And here is Amy Purdy, just a little bit. May Jesus guide our mental forces to recognize that we really are much, much more than our bodies, that we can really do something different in the world. She is dancing with a machine, an interface between the body and the soul. And the machine that has no soul, but that's being controlled by a computer, and our bodies, which is some of, uh, some sort of computer being controlled by my mind, by who I am, a spirit. May God bless us all. And just a little bit more of Amy Purdy in the Olympics. And Susanna is back to you. Wow, thank you so much. That was um, quite inspiring um wonderful wonderful i people really enjoyed it i have here mary's comment uh she thank you what an amazing lecture she starts here what an amazing lecture thank you so much for sharing your studies with us so yes um indeed it was it was great uh thank you and we need so much of that these days right um, our minds are being bombarded, you know, kind of like the lesson I read in the beginning, right? Yeah. I mean, so many moments that we feel it, it kind of went, it was very appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so many moments where we feel so overwhelmed, so lost, and those are very human moments. I mean, we all have them. Uh, it's not because we are spiritists, for example, that we're not going to have and feel because we are human, right? Yeah. And but just really um, knowing the power of our mind and knowing that the Lord is with us, inspiring us, and trying to attune to our minds. Um, so I always like this um, image of like opening your window in the morning so the sun can come in. So we we knowing that we have this power, but we also have to open up to allow this inspiration to get to us and give a boost to our psychic world so that we can kind of attune to the higher forces and, and, and help us in, in going and, and finding the strength to, to do the amazing things that we are all capable of. 
I mean, she's definitely an inspiration. And um, Ali is asking to um, for her name. Oh, it's Amy Purdy. A M I A M Y P U R D Y. I cannot make a comment here, so I can I can type it for you, and you can put put it there for everybody. Um, this is a uh, right. Amy Purdy. Oh, Amy Purdy. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, she she gives she gives lectures. That that lecture is is really um, really really interesting. Um, she went to she she went to uh, dancing with I think it's dancing with the stars. She danced uh -huh. at dancing. Oh, really? Olympics, wow. And that's why she went. She was invited to the Rio Olympics. So the, she's wow. a very you know her story is very very inspirational, and uh, it's a it's a lesson to us. And I love your uh, your input on you know open up the window because we yeah. need to open up the window. We really need to. And right here, right now, that's I, I think that's what we are. I mean, I'm in a window. You are in a window. Everybody is in a window. We are looking at each other through this, through this, and we are inviting this message to come in and open up the window to to the goodness in the world, and so that we can walk out the door and do what we let come in through the window. So that's yeah. One of the things that you said that really. Um... I really, I really loved it. And I, I, I thought it was such a great example of like how the mind also is so connected to the body. And, and it's like, you don't really need like a scientific article to show you that, right? So your example of the memory of, of something traumatic and how that immediately triggers a physical reaction. Mm -hmm. So we can expand that to every minute and every day whatever we're thinking is actually affecting our physical body so when we are you know in in a, in a very negative place um and we we are nurturing those thoughts and feelings right um for a long time that really really um affects our physical body and like again you don't it's like yeah you don't really need you know I, 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 sh I share recently, I, I was in a hospital with my son um, for, for some, some injury and, and in, in, in seeing the ER remind me immediately of my father uh, because he passed away two years ago and I was in the hospital with him and those memories, which, you know, I, I like right now I'm talking to you, I'm fine, but I was there in the ER in a, and I immediately started crying. Like it was like, you know, um, I couldn't, I couldn't help it. It was just like, so it's just like amazing. Like this uh, connection, which, you know, it's, it's something for us to, you know, self-love because there's so much focus on the body, but self-love is also taking care of your thoughts, being right. The hygiene of the mind. Uh, we talk about brushing our three, our teeth, two, three times a, a day, but how often do we stop in our days to do like a, yes, you know, a check on our minds and make sure that, you know, it's, it's taken care of, right. That we dust some of the thoughts that we, you know, kind of, uh, organize our, our mental environment to be at, you know, the best state possible. That is true. That is so true. You know this this um, this text this chap chapter two of glorious days as you put down there yeah uh, at the beginning uh, I I highly recommend people to to read it um, yeah I was looking to see if the book was here um yeah with you um glorious days um yeah. by Juana de Angelis has been uh, translated is available and it's an amazing book because it talks about a lot of um you know, uh, topics that are like, you know, day-to-day um, -day, uh, topics, right? That's true. That's true. And and, 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 and and I mean, it's not because I, I talked about this chapter that right. it's better. It, it, it's just, it is good as, as the others. It is that maybe, I mean, I didn't touch like maybe not, not even 10% of what she says because right. you have to focus in one aspect yeah. and follow. But yeah. if you, uh, if you guys, you know, go back and read the chapter, You'll find tid, tid, tidbits of what I said, but you will find my much more 
right? Mm-hmm. You'll find the connection to God straight that Joanna makes with the mental forces in God. Uh, right. If you will talk about Jesus in the end. And, and so if I, I highly recommend, it's not a very long text. It's like three or two or three pages. And um, it, it is it is worth reading if you feel. Yeah, in the book the also, uh, the writing is very um, it, it's, it's easy to follow. It's like you know, it's, it's it's objective, and the chapters are not too long, so it's it's kind of it's it's a great book, really, really, really good. Anyways, yeah. well, we are up without time. I could stay here talking to you for a long time. <laughs> uh, always so lovely, but I'm gonna ask you to please do our final prayer for us right All now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So with this, we would like to to think about God even more and and raise our thoughts to our dear friend and Master Jesus who came here to talk to us and to teach us. But right now, we would like to open up the heart and let him in, just like our dear friend Susanna said. Let's open the heart. Let's open the windows to this message, uh, to this message of love, of self-acceptance, self-transformation, and invite Jesus to help us with this by enabling us to open up the door and leaving to the world with his message by our side. So, dear Lord, dear Jesus, thank you for all the help that you've been giving us. Thank you for the blessings that our lives are at this moment, for being alive, for having a family, for having friends, for having a work, for having a place to stay, for having water to drink, for having the air to breathe for having the sun shining in our lives. And may we, even when darkness comes, may we open up our inner window to your world, a world of blessing, a world of love, a world of acceptance. May your love, may your light be with us and guide us, not only now, but forever. So be it. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thank you, everyone who joined us this morning. So nice, a pleasure to see you all online. Um, We'll be back uh, next Sunday and hope to see everybody back with us. Have a great Sunday and happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you, everyone.